Okay, so that's me without a beard. I started skating at that age and I never stopped. And I fucking love this sport and I do it every day since I was 12. That's me skateboarding. I did that until I was 12. And uh, then I got a, a pair of skates. Okay, this is my local mini ramp. Um, I learned these are the Bauer skates. I just put some fat, fat boys on there and it, uh, grind wheels and uh, started to do my first front sides. And after that, I got, a, I got some uh, fifth elements and some rollerweight canvas, learned fish brains. So you, you see, like we were just there hanging out every day. And uh, this is me, I think I was like 14 or 15. And uh, you see the, the other kids are younger. You see that? So when I was 16, I was kind of like the, the big boy in the half pipe. I was there every day. Like school was out, go to the half pipe, go back home, eat in the evening, go back, skate. So you, you become like a local celebrity. I was never like the best in the country. I'm not a good, compared to most people here, I'm not a good skater. But for these kids standing there in the background, I was the best. So what happens then is that, of course, they ask like, I want to be like as good as you. How can I learn? Like, please teach me, teach me, teach me. So at first, like I was 14, 15, I was like, nah, like, I don't, I don't know. I just skate. But then when I was 16, I was like, oh, yeah. Actually, that's kind of nice teaching. So yeah, I just started teaching. That was it. So I'm 31 now. Started when I was 16. So I've been doing this skate school thing for 15 years now. And uh, kind of developed some uh, methods for it at the end. So I, I kind of like, I have the feeling that I know what I'm doing now. This is a sh shot in the, in the future. Uh, this is like, the, this is Soul Company. Uh, I started it when I was, um, I think I was 20 or something. So I've, I, I was teaching already for four years then. Uh, started out at a local half pipe and then moved to the indoor skate park. Ended up with like 30, 40 students. Then I thought like, okay, let's make it official now because it was always just like, uh, black, you know, like uh, didn't pay taxes. We just like uh, took the money, uh, and uh, this was my first attempt at building a website. Uh, I programmed it myself, as you might see. But also remember, these are different times. This is like uh, 2006, so you could still pull a website like that off, kind of. Uh, and yeah, this is just like a news page, and uh, uh, here you see the beginning of the skate shop. Because um, uh, what happened is when you have a group of, uh, of students, first I would just uh, redirect them to the local skate shop, which every big city has like a shitty fun sports shop, right? They sell like scooters and blah, blah, blah. And uh, then they would just come back with skates that were too big and old models. And uh, I hated it because then you have like a student and He's like, oh, teacher, you see my new skates? I just got them for my birthday. I was like, yeah. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck, it's the legacy. God damn, it sucks. <laughs> Pay like 300 euros for that. Really early already, these are um, uh, ex-students of mine, grown up. And I think this is 2008. And at this point, they were already working for me. So that's how big uh, it already grew so fast. I think, Jacob, you have the same thing. Like, <coughs> you, you'll start working with other teachers really quickly. So we were doing four locations in this year. At, uh, so we taught at four cities. Uh, and uh, these guys were helping me. Uh, this is just the crew, me hanging out with uh, all, my, uh, all my students. Maybe some of you know, know Thijs, Thijs Tell. He's a friend of mine, but he was also a student. Not a lot of people know that. Yeah, these are also, here they're still students, but like the year after that, they started working for me. This one also started working for me. And uh, yeah, I still see some of them today, so it's kind of cool. Uh, it's such a long time ago, this is so cool. Uh, yeah, this is also, I didn't have a lot of old photos, so these are the only ones uh, I have. I think, maybe, or do the next one? Yeah, this one is Pascal Tan. He's on Racers now. So he's still like one of the top skaters from, uh, from the country. You know Pascal? You must know him. Yeah. 
Yeah, he, he doesn't travel uh, abroad that much, but everybody in the Netherlands knows him. He's like one of the best. And he's also a TV host now, so I sponsor him with my shop, and uh, he's like a, um, a Dutch celebrity now. So it's really good to have him. So when I, when I started to sell skates, it was firstly because the shops were doing such a horrible job. And actually the first thing, because I, I don't, I don't want to be, I, like I have a skate shop, but I don't necessarily want to have a skate shop. This is, wasn't my initial goal. It happened because it needed to happen. The, the other skate shops were just too bad. And uh, what I did as like the first solution to that, I just fixed up my students with my homies and was like, okay, uh, you have a size 42, I know that friend of mine has a 42 and he used to skate these cool razors and he buys like new ones every three months, so they're still good. So I, I got, like hooked them up. I did that for a couple months and then I just, uh, because I like, uh, I called up all my friends and made like a whole list of all the, sk the skates that they had in stock uh, at their homes. So I could sell them quicklier to my students, but then after a few months, I just started to uh, collect all those skates already. So I just took, took the car and went to all my friends and filled them up. And um, uh, so I had like a whole shed full of shitty skates, actually. So I needed to fix them. So that's how like the whole customizing thing come along. This is the, the website that came after that. And here, uh, it's still like the uh, news page is the, is the primary page. Uh, with, we had a forum and uh, a spot thing and uh, lessons and the skate shop. After that, uh, of course, the shop became the main thing. So here you see my shed filled with skates. These are the old ones that I got from my friends. Yeah, I started to like make them new again. Like if you do so many skates, if you like, we furbish them, uh, you'll start to get really good. So I started to get really good at customizing skates. I did it a lot, like almost every day, the whole day, customizing skates. Uh, just yeah, show a couple of more pictures. And now uh, this is also, uh, maybe it's fun to see some of them. You see a lot of Majestics, Thrones, Genesis, and it's just like, these are all the, like the semi-finished ones, but there's like even, ones in the bottom that are just like projects to be uh, started with. How, how long ago was this? Uh, this is 2008, so like super long ago. Uh, yeah, I started like doing clothing of course, because then like it, it started to, to be big, so then yeah, we, this is like an old photo shoot. Then you start to do demos. This is a really early demo we did at a school. This is me and Tice. Uh, the one I showed you before, like uh, he, he was a student, but then he also became my employee. Uh, he's still working together with me, uh, and we were like judging a competition. So, all right, this is just my setup back then, with Salomon's with uh, some Valo sole plate. I had to cut out the raised heel; it's a lot of work. And uh, you see some old Fila skates here with the roses sole plate. Fila had the roses. Yeah, in 2008, uh, so uh, 1998, I'm sorry. Yeah, it looked, uh, looked okay, yeah. Yeah, so that's how it all came to happen. Uh, in the end, I ended up owning a skate shop. We started with the web shop, of course. Uh, you know how the web shop came to be now. And then after a while, we had, um, he saw my house. Uh, we didn't have that much room, so I got like a warehouse. Once we had a warehouse, at first we didn't have opening hours, it was just me being there. But then people were wanting to come by all the time, so we started having opening hours. So we were kind of like, we were already a shop in a way. Uh, we started to like present the stuff nice in the warehouse. And then the, the, the step to opening an actual store was just, it was just a different building. That's it. There's almost nothing changed because we already had opening. So it kind of like grew really, really slowly. Okay, so I have uh, two more slideshows, and that's kind of like how the situation is now. These are just photos from the last uh, year or two years or something, and uh, I don't really have a lot to say here, I think. So we can just like, skip through it a bit, just like, so just people see what we're doing. These are my, yeah, so all my students. 
learning how to jump. This is introduction courses. Yeah. This is our favorite skate park, the Olympia Plain Skate Park. My, another ex, ex uh, student of mine who is now working for me with his uh, cute, cute students. This is another ex student of, of mine and who's, he is now working for me. Uh, here we're doing a race. This is a big competition in the middle of, in the center of Amsterdam with uh, all my students. This is an old picture. Here, this is actually the guy that was doing, that's Davey. He's one of my top teachers. He was the guy, like, he, over there, he's like thir 13 or something, and now he's 19 and he's teaching. That's super cool. Oh, this is an old photo. We do a lot of birthday parties. That's really nice. This is another birthday. This is the same guy that was 13 on the other photo, Davey. I love him. He, he feels like my brother. Like it's a mixture between my child and my homie and my brother. It's, he's everything to me. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I look up to him too. Yeah. So. Uh, we try to teach at, at as many locations as possible because I just want like if you go to a random skate park, I want there to be a presence of our sport. That's the goal. So, this is the shop we have now. It's in Amsterdam. Uh, we've come a long way, I guess. Uh, there's two sections. I like it to be uh, like a boutique, so that you can just like walk in, and even if you if you don't know anything about skating, you feel like okay, you can just walk in and buy a shirt. Because if you if you if you start this shop with only hardware, you're not gonna get any random people in. So. This is the front of the store. Just go to the next photo. There's, you see a lot of t-shirts. We have a whole wall of caps. Uh, and that, you can see that really well if, you, if you're on the outside. You see like all the caps. So a lot of people come in to buy a cap. It's really funny. If, you, if you're at our street, in our shopping street, if you just sit there on a bench, you see people coming by with inline skate gear, with caps and shirts and stuff that are not skating. And that's, that's awesome. And this is the, the door to the back. And we have to uh, do the next one. Uh, these are the skates. So we got two sections, of course, the UFS skates and then the, the 165 millimeter setups. Um, yeah. Uh, we carry everything. It's uh, like really complete. We, we don't miss any brand. It's, and we have, I think we have all sizes of all models of all brands, so, and also hardware. I think this is so, uh, because of my background as like specialized customizing, um, my focus is really on hardware still. Of, I, I really like the soft goods. I'm gonna tell more about that later. But the hardware needs to be on point too. So we have, I think the most hardware of any skate shop in the world. Just like frames, buckles, wheels, uh, we have it all. And when I look at other websites of, of my, I don't know, colleagues, I would say, they, uh, always, I'm always missing some brands there. So yeah, the next one. Caps again, same for the caps. Like if you go to, I don't know, if you go to the Grindhouse or anything, like they maybe have three caps. And I'm like, why? We have like 30 grab caps. This is maybe, that's, this is a good uh, last photo for the, for the shop because, um, uh, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't need to have a shop. Like, I don't care. I'm, uh, uh, I also went to college. I studied engineering. I can get a lot of money doing like, some math shit and draw things on a computer and, or I don't know, program stuff. Um, I'm doing this for the sport, 100%. This, this is what I'm doing it for. And the shop is it's, it's not per se to sell stuff because if, if, that's, if that's your goal, don't open a shop because you're not, you're not gonna be rich from it, so don't have that in mind. Uh, just get a normal job if you wanna have a, a good salary. The shop, main reason is to have like a, a foothold, have like a, our culture there. This is, uh, this is Seoul Skate Shop, is the shop where our culture is portrayed the best in the world. 
seriously, I don't know any shop in the world that has more love in the same small area than this store. Everything you see in this shop is relevant. And if you go to any other shop, you have to like search for it. You're like, oh, this is a cool shop. Bam, that's where I want to be. But here it's like, oh, this is a cool shop. And it's like every little thing is, is here. And uh, that's why we made like a wall as well to, with photos uh, just to show our culture. And because if random people walk in, that's what we want to wanna show to them. Uh, okay, that was the shop, and then another slideshow with the customs, and then I'm done. <laughs>